ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه ومن سار على سبيله الى يوم الدين اما بعد um, I first like to start by saying Jazakum Allah Khairan and extending my gratitude to those who are in charge of the ISOC of Westminster University for extending the invitation and for your husnul dhan, your good thoughts of myself that you deem me befitting to come and visit you and benefit inshallah ta'ala again and also the honor of sharing something that is in relationship to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As we know from the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, fi baytin min biyutillah, yatluna kitab Allah, yatadarusunahu baynahum, illa nazalat alayhimu al-malaika, wa nazalat alayhimu al-sakinatu wal-rahma, wa ma dhukira fi iddati ahadith fi hadha al-bab. Yani a number of things mentioned in narrations of that hadith regarding that there are none who gather in one of the houses of the houses of Allah Azza wa Jal reciting the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala studying it among themselves except that nazalat alayhim as of the things that they will receive is tranquility also ar-rahma also you, you have for example the malaika, they will come. And when the malaika attend the circles of knowledge, يَدْعُونَ لِلْحَاضِرِينَ They make dua for those who are in those circles of knowledge. Even is mentioned for the one who didn't even intend to come. Even for the one who did not intend to come to the circle of knowledge, they're still mentioned. As long as they end up being in that presence and taking a benefit. And what's mentioned by Ahlul Ilm, it doesn't have to be a masjid. When it mentions, it doesn't have to be a masjid. It, ha- it can be any circle of knowledge in where a person studies something related to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the topic of discussion, as mentioned, is reconnecting with the Qur'an. And the Nabi said, Qur'an فَإِنَّهُ أَشَدُّ تَفَلُّتًا مِنَ الْإِبَلِ فِي عُقْلِهَا It mentioned, or كما قال the Nabi Sallam, have constant review of the Qur'an have a constant relationship with the Qur'an because it is faster in fleeing from his companion than the camel that is not tied up. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala قَالَ فِي كِتَابِهِ وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنِ لِلذِّكْرِ فَهَلْ مِنْ مُدَّكِرِ That we have mentioned, that we have made the Qur'an easy for you to memorize, so from those who memorize it. In this hadith we mentioned that it's easy to be forgotten. Allah mentions it's easy to remember, to memorize. And in the Prophet's hadith that we mentioned, it's easy to be forgotten. I.e. it can run away quickly. Just like the camel that's not locked up. So my question, what's the wisdom behind that? Who can give me a benefit regarding these two evidences? It's easy to memorize, but it's easy to be lost. What's the benefit of this? What's the wisdom? Don't take the Quran lightly. What else? Uh, keep reciting if you want to retain it. What else? Give the Quran its due right. Give the Quran its due right. What else? لا يحفظ القرآن إلا من أراد الحفظ. Only the person who wants to memorize the Quran will memorize it. From Allah's wisdom that he made it easy to remember but easy to forget 
It's only those who have ikhlas in wanting to memorize the Quran that will memorize the Quran. It's easy to memorize. Quran is not hard. Whoever thinks the Quran is hard to memorize, and this is waswas from themselves. Because Allah says it's easy. Very easy. Allah wants you to memorize it. That's why Allah made it easy for you. But the one it becomes difficult for is for the one who puts in barriers from their own doings. From the worst barriers of memorizing Quran is what? Amazing. Worse than that? Sins. Sins. And that's why Imam Shafi'i, rahimahullah, when he mentioned to Waqi'i, rahimahullah, Waqi'i was from those of the Salaf, they said, لا يرى عنده كتاب ولا دفتر ولكن يحفظ كل شيء. As for Waqi'i, they say, he was never seen with a book, never seen with a pen, never seen with a notebook, ever. But he memorized everything. Memorized knowledge from just listening. So Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah, and this is Imam Shafi'i. Imam Shafi'i used to complete the Quran 60 times in Ramadan. Only a hafiz of the Quran can do that. Yet, this is Imam Shafi'i, not me. Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah complained about his memory. To Waqi'ah. That's why the lines of poetry is famous, Shakautul Waqi'ah and Su'a Hifdi. I complained to Waqi'ah about the deficiency of my memory. فَأَرْشَدَنِي إِلَى تَرْكِ الْمَعَاصِي So he guided me to leaving off sin. وَقَالِ اعْلَمْ أَنَّ الْعِلْمَ نُورٌ I said, no, that knowledge is what? Light. هَذَا مِنْ أَوْصَافِ الْقُرْآنِ the Quran is also of from its descriptions that is Nur. Wa Nurullahi la yu'tahu asi. And as for the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's not given to who? The sinful one. So if a person wants to memorize Quran, then you have to stay away from sin. And also Stay away from minor sins to the best of your ability. Because the Salaf they say, La kabira in the Tawbah. La kabira in the Tawbah. There's no major sin as long as there's repentance. Wala sagira ma'al israr. And there's no minor sin with persistence. It becomes a major sin. It becomes a major sin. And the Salaf used to say, لا تنظر إلى صغر المعصية ولكن انظر إلى عظم من عصيت Don't look at how small the sin is, but look at the significance of the one you're disobeying. These are of the things that will aid you in memorizing the Qur'an. Some of us, it's not that we have neglected the Qur'an or we don't have a relationship with the Qur'an. You're in university, most of you, all of you, I'm assuming. And sometimes a person at a stage after university, they start working, they get married, they have a family, they start to have what? Distractions. Things that preoccupy them then this becomes stress. When a person finds himself distance from the Qur'an, they start to feel stressed. And imagine at the time of revelation, Allah says, وَقَارَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبِّ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَحْجُورًا This isn't after the death of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu This wasn't the last 300 years. This is over 1400 years ago Allah said and the messenger said oh my lord my people have taken this Quran as something that is what? abandoned so imagine our time now 
at the time of the Messenger of Allah, this is not after. It's not the time of Imam Ahmed, it's not the time of Imam Shafi'i, Imam Malik, la. It's not the time of Hassan al-Basri, the Tabi'in. The time of the companions, the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu he said, my people have taken this Qur'an as something that they have abandoned, neglected. Today we have many people that memorize Qur'an. Is that sufficient in having a relationship with the Qur'an? Of the things that we mentioned today, what is our obligation regarding the Qur'an? What is upon us? What rights does the Qur'an have over us? Because when a person understands the reality of the Qur'an, it's more important than everything you're doing in your life right now. And if you want success in what you're doing, what you're pursuing in your life right now, then you need to have a stronger relationship with the Qur'an. Because he mentioned, someone the self said, "Man arada an yalam annahu yuhibbu Allah." The Salaf would say, "Whoever wants to know whether they love Allah Azza wa Jal, falyandur ila hubbihi li kalam Allah. Let him look to his love for the kalam, the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal. For in kano yuhibbu al Quran, for who yuhibbu Allah. If he loves the Quran, then he loves who." Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why do you have to love the Quran? Because it's the kalam of Allah azza wa jal. And none of you, la yu'minu ahadukum hatta yakuna Allah wa rasooluhu ahabba ilayhi mimma siwahima. None of you truly believe into Allah and his messenger become more beloved to you than anyone else. So a sign that you love Allah azza wa jal that you truly love Allah, and it's for each and every single person to take themselves to account. Look at your relationship with the Qur'an. How often do you read the Qur'an? The Qur'an is the best form of dhikr of Allah Azza wa The best form of dhikr. And the Salaf will say, مَا تَقَرَّبَ عَبْدٌ إِلَى اللَّهِ بِشَيْءٍ أَحَبَّ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ كَلَامِهِ the Salaf would mention, and servant has not gained more closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with something more beloved to him than his speech. The speech of Allah Azza wa Jal. We've heard the hadith, Man adali waliyan faqad adantuhu bil harb. Whoever shows animosity or enmity to any one of my allies, and this is Allah, hadith Qudsi, saying this, then I've declared war against him. And then it mentions about how does a person become loved by Allah Azza wa Jal. When Allah loves you, what's the fruits of this? What's the fruits of being loved by Allah Azza wa Jal? What happens? None of you know? He raises your ranks. What else? Your hardships are taken care of. He tells the angels to love you. Ahl al sama. Allah shouts to Ahl al Sama, I love so and so, so love so and so. What else? This is why we don't tread the path properly. But they say, Man arafa fatla shay, harasa alayhi. Whoever knows the virtue of something, they will strive to attain it. If you truly know what it meant to be loved by Allah Azza wa Jal, you'll do everything. To be loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything possible. Because in that same hadith I mentioned, it tells you what happens. When Allah loves you, Kuntu yadahu lati yabtishu biha. I become his hand he strikes with. Allah will aid you in all your affairs. Warijahu lati yamshi biha. And his leg that he walks with. And his hearing that he hears with. And his sight that he sees with. This is from the fruits of what? Being loved by Allah Azza wa Jalla. Okay, what does it mean that Allah becomes your sight that you see with? You don't look at what's haram. Where are you going to look? The book of Allah Azza wa Jalla. 
the Quran. You don't listen to that which is haram. You don't listen to music. You don't listen to anything that's going to take you away from the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. So you're only going to listen to what? The Quran. Not even nasheed. Waste of time. There's no such thing as Islamic nasheed. Waste of time. Everyone gets a car, the first thing they do is download nasheed playlist. Say Islamic nasheed, nasheed, sunnah, there's no such thing as Islamic nasheed. Or you get poetry, you don't even understand the words. Why listen to poetry? Just because it sounds nice. You don't get ajr for this. You don't get ajr for listening to poetry. But if you listen to the Quran, even if you don't understand it, what happens? You get reward. Not only do you get reward, you gain the fruits of listening to the Quran. Itimitnan fil qalb, as sakina, wa rahat al nafsul jasad, wal aqal. You get the fruits of the Quran. Tranquility in your life, peace of mind. Remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what they mention when Allah says, Ida quriya al Quranu. Don't just listen al insat. Also, you listen attentively. The ulama they mention if a person is unable to read the Quran and gain the reward of every harf, you know, ashra amthaliha. Listening attentively, you gain the reward as if you are reading the Quran. But today, what happens? This is also a sign that our hearts are sick. If you're with your friends and you're driving, for example, and then you start playing the Quran, if someone says, Akhi, please turn that off, man, I don't want... Then this is a problem. This is a problem. This shows that there's a sickness in that person's heart. That a person, when they hear the Quran, they want to turn it off. They say, put on this nasheed. This nasheed is banging, akhi. Listen to, look, listen to the bars, bro. No reward. What happens? Divert from the book of Allah, Azza wa Jal. So if you want to know your love for Allah, look at your love of the Quran. Some people, the Quran, they only bring out Ramadan. They take it off the shelf like this, and they have to do this. They have to blow off the dust. Because they don't know the significance of the Qur'an. And we mentioned, the best thing that you can do to gain closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is dhikr of Allah. The best form of dhikr is what? What is it? Qur'an. Qur'an. I know Sheikh said you have to listen, but you have to also reply. I'm going to ask you questions. Because you never know. I'm telling you now, you're in university, someone is crying. Someone is depressed. Someone fears that their future is going to come to an end because they're not going to pass the exams, they're failing, they're behind. All of these matters are connected to the dunya. So what? You, put, you fail your exams, so what? Does it mean you're going to fail in life? Does it mean the door comes to an end? No. Who gives you risk? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who grants you knowledge? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alaysa kadalik? But the reality is, we forget Allah azza wa jal. When do you remember Allah? In times of hardship. In times of need. When everything's going wrong. But what did the Prophet Muhammad SAW say to Ibn Abbas? In the hadith it says, Ya Ghulam, da'ni wa'allimuka kalimat. What does it say, Mahdi? At the end of it, what does it say? Specific to this point about remembering Allah only in times of hardship. Go and say it. Okay, can you tell me the part I'm looking for? About knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, the whole hadith is beneficial. The whole hadith as well is evident of its own meaning. 
But the part that is mentioned in the second narration, those who are memorizing or studying Arba'in and Nawi, it mentions both narrations of the hadith. In the second narration it says, Ta'arraf ala Allah fi mada. He knows. No one knows? Don't be shy. Any of the sisters know memorize 40 hadith? Study it. Any of the brothers? Don't be disheartened if you don't know these things. Okay? Anything that we may study and you don't know, and I ask you if you don't know these things, it's an encouragement for you to go and learn them. But if you start to be depressed and say, oh, I should know this, what am I doing with my life? You'll still not be able to memorize Quran. You'll still not learn Hadith. Because that sadness you give yourself becomes an obstacle. It mentions, Ta'arraf ala Allah fi rakhai ya'rifka fi shidda. Ta'arraf ala Allah fi rakhai ya'rifka fi shidda. What does this mean? Make yourself known to Allah SWT during times of ease. And Allah will remember you in times of hardship. Make yourself known to Allah in times of what? Ease. Don't make the mistake of the Yahud, and Nasara, Wal Malahida, even the atheists. When they're going to die, if they're on a plane and they think it's going to crash, that everyone remembers Allah. This is Allah mentioned about them in the Quran. When they they fil fulk, when they go in the sea, they get, when they see the horrors of the ocean, they remember Allah Azza wa Jal instantly. As soon as they're safe, back to shirk, back to disobedience. We can't be like this. We have to remember Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in times of ease, and the best remembrance of Allah is what Quran. We have to make this known to us because someone's going to ask you. You're going to see someone say, look, remember Allah. Read the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. Every day. Don't let one day go by except that you read the book of Allah SWT. Then you'll see the fruits of this in your life. Why? Because when you know Allah in times of ease, and the best way to know Allah SWT is by His own speech. In the Quran, what is in the Quran? Why should we read the Quran? What is in it? Everything? It's an easy answer. What's the evidence everything is in it? <laughs> Who knows? What's the evidence everything is in it? Huda. Guidance. What else? Al Furqan. What does that mean? Criterion between what? Al Haq wal Batil. Truthfulness and falsehood. Okay, who can give me the evidence for everything? I'll get them a prize, inshallah. I don't have it with me today, but I'll get them a prize. Fire your eyes up, we'll organize, we'll get you a prize. My prizes are only Islamic related, okay, not cash prices. <laughs> they will cost me, but I will not give you cash, inshallah. We'll get you something Islamic related. Like a book or something to do with the Quran, inshallah. I can't tell you that. No clues. Anyone know? The evidence that everything is in the Quran. If you say English, this is not what Allah said. <laughs> That's another point. Whatever we say in English is not the Quran. Anything in English is what? Not the Quran. Inna anzalnahu Quranan Arabian la'allakum mada ta'qilun. You're not going to understand the Quran without the Arabic language. 100%. Promise you. Do you have the answer? There's no doubt. 
Right? Does it mean everything? Good, uh, good, good, good try. That's specific to the deen. Shifa, yani this is yani medicine. Warahma, this is khas. Now. It's good now. See, you're thinking, this is how you what? Contemplate on the Quran. This is very good. Do this all the time. I'm telling you, do this all the time. The Quran has everything you need in it. Everything you need. But what's the evidence? This is Futuhat in Tishar al Islam. This is Islam spreading. This is not everything. He's memorized the Quran. All of it. Allah Yahfak. Who's memorizing Quran? Only a few of us. Okay, who has the intention to start after today? Everyone, please, everyone, 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 everyone. Wallahi, even if it's one ayah a day, please. I'm telling you. Al-Quran Shafi'an li ashabihi Yawm al-Qiyamah Hada ma qala Nabiyuna alayhi salatu salam Ya'ti al-Quran Shafi'an li ashabihi Yawm al-Qiyamah The Quran is an interceder for you Yawm al-Qiyamah For those who are the companions of the Quran Yani Alladhi yusahibu al-Quran al musahaba means it's with you always. Even if you don't memorize it, but you always read it. Imam Muqbil rahimahullah, his daughter said, my father didn't memorize the Quran. But the way he quoted it in his lessons, you'd have thought he has what? Memorized it. When they say he didn't memorize it, he didn't commit it to memory like going by surah, by surah, by surah. But he knew everything that was in the Quran. You memorize for your university course, right? You know this is a joke. When I say this is a joke here, not what you're doing. What you memorize is only for the exam. Once you get a job, you don't need it. Did you know that? They give you book. They give you guides. Everything's on the internet. You see, a doctor, they study seven years. They only have to memorize for what? The exam. Only for the exam. Once they pass, they have a desktop computer. Symptom. Give them everything. Do they need to memorize anything now? No. This is not like the Quran though. The Quran, the true benefit comes when? When? Yom al Qiyamah. Okay, who can tell me the evidence of the benefit of the Quran Yom al Qiyamah? In Arabic, bonus. We're still going to come back. If no one says Arabic, you can say it in English. Not that one. Regarding memorizing. You know that sometimes there's many evidences that show the virtues, but sometimes we make it specific with one word. Something specific to memorizing. I may not meet you ever again, but I want to give you homework. Your homework is... For this month, it's the first day of the month, is to find and gather all the ahadith that you can that mention the fadail of the Quran, the virtues of the Quran. You have virtues of the Quran within itself 
and you have virtues of those who memorize the Quran, those who read the Quran and the likes. That is your personal homework. I want everyone to do it. But for yourself, not for anyone else, don't even tell anyone. What I want you to do, a way that you can get a reward with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is maybe every day put a WhatsApp status or Instagram post. If you use social media, be a key to goodness. Sometimes we're always quick to share things to do with the dunya. World Cup, I don't even watch this rubbish, but I end up finding out the scores and everything because someone's telling me. But as for, do I need to watch it? Nope, someone's going to post it on social media. But it's not enough. And Sheikh Uthaymin, rahimahullah, when social media started to come, he said, Zahamu. And he over traffic social media because there's not enough goodness there. So what do we do? If I share one hadith that mentions the virtue of the Quran, you don't know. One person may read that hadith and start memorizing the Quran. One person might read the hadith and memorize the whole Quran and you will get reward for it. And you don't even know. You don't know. When will you know? Yawm al-Qiyamah. Al-Hadith yuqalu li sahib al-Quran iqra' wartaqi waratil kama kunta turatil fi dunya fa inna akhira manzilatik عند آخر آية عند آخر آية تقرأها من سمع هذا الحديث يزهد الحديث you see in this hadith mentioned is said to the companion of the Quran we said companion not the part time friend not the friend in need the companion of the Quran is going to be said to them read Waratil, recite with tartil, with tajweed, jamil, sotak, make your voice nice with the Quran and raise and ascend. For indeed, your last place in where? Jannah. Is with the last ayah that you have read. The last ayah. This is Bushra al Hafad. This is glad tidings to. Those who memorize the Quran. No one else. Because if you don't memorize the Quran, can you ascend? What can you read? You don't know. But if you memorize the Quran, you're going to be commanded to read. Read, read. But who's going to command you? Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah is going to command you to read and ascend in Jannah. And you're going to keep going until the last verse you recite. That is glad tidings to the people who memorize the Quran. That's the evidence about the virtue of the memorizing of the Quran. The one who memorizes it is going to be said, read and ascend, go higher, higher for each verse of the Quran. Do we not want to go high place in Jannah? We have to have high ambition, especially with Jannah. Don't ask to enter the door. What should you ask for? Jannah to Firdaus. What's the evidence? This is an important lesson we're learning here. The Quran is the first source of evidence in Islam. Right? What's the second source? Hadith. The Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who can tell me what is the definition of ilm, of knowledge? Kind of. You're close. That's the dalil. That's the evidence. What's the meaning of knowledge? Yani bain al ulama. You study your surah thalatha in Arabic. Like read the Arabic text as well. Who hasn't studied the Surah Thalatha? Don't be don't be upset if you haven't. I just want to know the the, the percentage. Do we know the book of Surah Thalatha? Everyone knows it. Who doesn't know of the book of Surah Thalatha? Taib. The book of Surah Thalatha is from a series of books 
by Al Imam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab. Rahimahullah. And I'm going to tell you all now if anyone speaks evil of this Imam, you have to run away from them. Because the evil is with that person. Because what did I ask you first? What is what? Evidence, right? Now, unfortunately, we have those who, when they attack Islam, how do they attack Islam? Do they come and beat you up? They say, oh, there's a Muslim. Punch! No. They attack you by way of knowledge. Now, we're in a time which is considered to be the, what is called ideological warfare, where it's an attack of the mind. So the ways that we make you not understand Islam is by taking you away from the sources of knowledge. <clears throat> from the signs of the hour is that knowledge is going to be removed. And when the knowledge is removed from the people, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? They're going to take the ignorant people as their people of knowledge. Even me, don't take knowledge from me. Me, I'm jahil. Don't take knowledge from me. I am temporary benefit for you. I want you to take knowledge from who I take knowledge from. How do you do this? You learn the Arabic language. When you learn the Arabic language, you can go straight to the ulama, the scholars. The Allah says, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Ask the people of knowledge if you don't, no. The ones who Allah has said in the Qur'an, remember I said to you, the Qur'an is guidance for everything. إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءِ Those who truly fear Allah Azza wa Jal, from his ibad, from his servants, are the scholars, the people of knowledge. Me, I'm not a person of knowledge. I'm a small student. And we don't say this to be humble. This is the reality. I can promise you, when we are all general, and I'm general, but some of us, we know Arabic people raise you up immediately. And that's why a poet said, Ilmun Nahwi, Zainun Lil Fata. Knowledge of the Arabic grammar, it beautifies a young person. Yukrimuhu Haythu Ata. It will honor him wherever he goes. فَمَنْ لَمْ يَكُنْ يَعْلَمْهُ Whoever doesn't know it, فَحَقُّهُ أَنْ يَسْكُتَ Then he should stay silent. He shouldn't speak. So Arabic, it honors you. So what happens, and I've witnessed it, I remember, wallahi, subhanAllah, I worked in an Islamic school once. Just because I gave the khutbah al hajj in Arabic, they're like, oh, we have a scholar. And because we don't know the people of knowledge, what happens? Someone says some nice words in Arabic. We're like, mashallah, this is a sheikh. But today, what's the new method of saying someone's a sheikh? He's got half a million followers on YouTube, half a million followers on TikTok. Mashallah. He answers loads of questions. But you know Imam Malik? Rahimahullah, we've all heard of Imam Malik. There was a situation, they came and they traveled to him, they asked him 40 questions. He only answered four. For 36, he said, I don't know. For 36, he said, I don't know. This is Imam Malik. So they said, what are we going to tell the people? He said, tell them, Imam Malik doesn't know. It's a side point, but what are we trying to talk about now? What is ilm? What is knowledge? When you study your Surah Thalath, it mentions Al-ilmu ma'rifatul haqqi bidalilihi Knowledge is knowing the truth with its evidence. Because now you're going to, all of you, whether you like it or not, you represent Islam. You don't have a choice. Whether you like it or not, you are a caller to Islam. 
either by way of your words or by way of your actions. You do something wrong, someone's going to say to you, you're meant to be Muslim. They're not going to say, oh, Zaid did this. As soon as you do something wrong, it's an attack on Islam. So when we say, when our people try to take you away from the people of knowledge, the scholars, it's an attack on Islam. Why I mentioned the works of Muhammad ibn, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, rahimahullah. When you study his book, he doesn't say anything from his own words. Nothing at all. The only thing from his own word is what? The title of the chapter. That's it. And then he says, Qala Allah, he always starts with the Quran first. Because that is the primary source of evidence. He always starts with the Quran first. And then, Hadith. An amazing book I advise you all to get and read is Kitabul Kaba'ir, the book of major sins. There's two. There's one by Imam al Zahabi, but the one I'm talking about is by the one that is by Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab. But because you have people that don't like that name, it says Sulaiman al Tamimi, which is also from his name. And it's a very beneficial book. It talks about the major sins from sins of the heart to sins of the tongue, and to the sins of your limbs. And in this book, all he says is, Allah said, and the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said. And that's why I've said to you, many times I ask you a question, I've asked you for what? Evidence. Because you are in university, and other people like you, they got deceived by academic knowledge. And they believed they were not qualified to speak about Islam. This is a major mistake. If you're intelligent in computer science, in medicine, it doesn't mean you're like this with Islam. As I said to you, you memorize the books you're studying for what? Your exam, right? So we have no excuse to memorize the Quran. Because as I emphasize, your, what you're memorizing now, what you're studying in university, is a short term benefit. But when you're memorizing the Quran, this is going to benefit you now and until you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and after you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all of your affairs. So we go back to my original question. What is the evidence in the Quran? And the Quran clarifies everything. You still haven't found it, you didn't use anything in you know the apps you can search by word. Do we give up? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fil kitabi min shay. We have not left off anything in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing's been left off. I.e. is guidance for everything the Quran a third of the Quran is stories a third of the Quran is stories of the prophets and messengers and the different nations that preceded us why do you think we have these stories in the Quran is it bedtime stories for the children you can tell them about stories Musa alayhi salam, Yusuf alayhi salam and they can go to sleep why do we have stories in the Quran? To take lessons. To take lessons. Surah Al-Fatiha is called Ummul Kitab. Yes? Ummul Kitab, meaning the mother of the book. Which book is it? The mother of the Quran. Which ayah in Surah Al-Fatiha tells us to go back to the stories of the Qur'an. Now, Sirat al-ladheena n'amta alayhim ghayr al-maghdubi alayhim wa dalin How? Okay, what is that Sirat? From Surah Al-Fatiha, do you know? Do you know what that straight path is from Surah Al-Fatiha? 
Do we? There's an allusion, right? It tells you the path of those whom Allah is favored. From Surah Al-Fatiha, do we know who Allah is favored? Does it mention it there? So how do we know? We have to go back to the Quran where it says, ma'alladina an'ama Allahu alayhim min al nabiyyin wa siddiqin wa shuhada wa salihin wa hasuna ulaika rafiqa. So when you, when you look at this now, you understand Surah Al-Fatiha is the mother of the book. Why? Because it's a summary of the whole Quran. The first three ayat is a description of who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> then we have Iyaka na'budu wa Iyaka nasta'in. Only you we worship and only you we seek help. Where do I learn what I need to do to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Where do we find worship? Huh? Okay, who knows the definition of worship? If you want, it's a bonus. So I can't hear you. No. There's a bit missing. Just a little bit at the end. Al Zahira Wal Batina. Jayid. Ahsanti. So here it mentions according to Sheikh Azam Taymiyyah, Ibadah is a comprehensive word of everything of statements and actions that Allah is. What's the first condition? Pleased with. And that which he loves that is apparent and internal okay where do i learn these statements and actions the brother said what's the evidence the quran is either proof for you or against you so here we read it every single day how many times at least 17 Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah according to the most recent version I have of the book has wrote a book that's four volumes four volumes and it's all related to Iyaka na'budu wa Iyaka nasta'in it's called Madarij al-Salikin four volumes with the checking and one verse of the Quran one ayah Surah al-Fatiha Contains everything you need to know, ijmalan. Generally speaking, the rest of the Quran will bring you the rest in detail. The evidence you brought earlier, ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه. That is the Quran. There's no doubt in it. هدى للمتقين. If you want guidance, we say إهدنا الصراط المستقيم. Right. But Allah has given you the guidance. I cannot say, Oh Allah, guide me to the straight path, but I don't even read the straight path. The straight path is the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad. Which evidence in the Quran tells me I have to follow the Sunnah? Ati'u Allah wa ati'u Rasul. What else? Naam. Qul in kuntum tuhibbuna Allah, fattabi'uni yuhbibukum Allah. Again, do you want to be loved by Allah Azza wa Jal? Do you want Allah to love you? What do you need to do? Follow the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is a refutation of who? The Qur'aniyun. I mean, let's not even call him Qur'aniyun. They don't deserve this name. Because they have no relationship to the Qur'an at all. No relationship to the Qur'an at all. 
Allah mentions wa ma ataakum ar-rasul fa khudhuhu wa ma nahaakum anhu fantahu whatever Allah the messenger has given you or commanded you if you have to do it whatever he's prohibited you from you have to what stay away from it where is this in the Quran the Quran tells me to go where to the sunnah the Quran tells me to go to the sunnah what is proof that the sunnah is also revelation وَمَا يَنْتِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ do you see how we have the answers in the Quran? How do we know we have to pray? What's the evidence? Quran. Where in the Quran? Imagine, well, I'm not going to say this, but imagine you're outside the station. Someone said, Mashallah, you look like you're a Muslim. I heard you have to pray. Where did you get that from? The Quran. Okay, where? Where in the Quran? I, I, I'm trying to read it. You know, I've got my English one. Where? What does it say? What are you going to tell him? Or her? What does Allah say? Aqeem salah Allah says in the Quran, Aqeem salah Establish the prayer. That's why I know it's an obligation. I've been commanded to what? Pray. When we talk about reconnecting to the Qur'an, these evidences or these examples I've tried to make your mind busy with now is for you to learn about how to contemplate on the Qur'an and the reality of how significant the Qur'an is in your, your daily life. You're going to see many examples. If you're depressed, you're feeling low as a student, in university. Go and read Surah Yusuf. Don't just read the Arabic alone if you don't understand the Arabic language. Make sure every page you read, you read your most common language, whatever your language is, your first language, and then you understand. Read the translation. And make sure you understand what you're reading. Whenever you feel like you're being tested, Read the stories of the prophets in the Quran. And then you'll start to put things in perspective. Do you believe you're going to be tested? Or you're going to be left without tests? Allah mentions this within the Quran. In the beginning of Surah Al-Ankabut. Do we believe that we're going to be saying we believe and not be tested? It's not possible. But if I don't read the Quran, I fail to... Remember this. So when I go through hardship, I start to look for other than the Quran as a source of cure. You mentioned Shifa wa Rahma. The Quran is Shifa. Lima fi sudur. Illness of the heart. The greatest illness is the illness of the heart. Why is it so? Why is the worst illness the illness of the heart? And who can give me evidence? <laughs> Naam. Jameen. The hadith, inna al-halal bayin wa inna al-haram bayin. What does it say in the end? Allah wa inna fil jasadi mudgha. Ida saluhat, saluha al-jasadu kullu. If is it not in the body, there's a morsel of flesh. If it's upright, the whole body is upright. Where the fasadat, fasad al-jasadu, if it's corrupted, the whole body is corrupted. Okay, where do you memorize the Quran? Is it in your head? Where do you memorize the Quran? The heart. The heart carries the Quran. But you see, if the heart is sick, can it carry the Quran? La. What's the worst sickness of the heart? La. Al shirk. Or kufr. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi أكثر منافقي أمتي قراؤها أكثر منافقي أمتي قراؤها The more the majority of the hypocrites of this ummah are the reciters those who recite the Quran 
the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, told us of the things he feared for us most was shirk al asghar, minor shirk. What kind of shirk is this? Who knows? Riya. You have riya and sum'a. Who knows Arabic? What's the difference in riya and sum'a? Don't worry if you don't know. I'm just, it's a test. Some things are known by way of the language, and some things are known by studying knowledge in the language. Do you know? Do you know the difference between sum'a and riya? Do you want to go for it? You want to leave it? No problem. That's good. What you just did there is praiseworthy. Don't be Google and say, does it mean, do you mean, I think you meant this? Tafadl. To show off. That's also Riyah. Riya is either doing or leaving for the sake of a person. Riya is to do with actions. What is sum'a? Um, when, when you talk about what you've done. Imagine I came here today and said, MashaAllah, we're going to talk about Quran. I just finished Quran yesterday. You know, Salam Mubarak. You think, what's this guy on about? Isn't it? Like, who's this guy? What are you telling me for? This is sum'a, when a person narrates their actions for praise. And subhanAllah, we see the best example in the Sahaba. One of the Sahaba, there was a situation when something happened at night, where there was a, a certain, uh, something was seen. I can't remember the hadith exactly, it's in Kitab al And they mentioned, who saw this? And one of the Sahaba says, me. akun musalli. He mentioned, I saw it, but I wasn't praying at the night. What did he negate from himself immediately? It was at night time, at the time of Qiyamul Layl. He said, as for me, I saw it, but I was not praying. What does he want to remove from the people? Any possible sum'ah. That they feel like he was up because he was in ibadah. He said, look, I was bitten by something poisonous. But he said, I wasn't up in the night praying. You hide your actions. If you want to memorize the Quran, the first thing you have to have is ikhlas. If you want to be successful in this life, in all of your affairs, you need to have ikhlas. You have to be sincere. It has to be done for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. If you do it for other than the sake of Allah, you will only get your reward in this life. So when it comes to our obligation and how we need to reconnect with the Qur'an, there are a number of things to mention. The first of them, the way that we, the obligation upon us with regards to the Qur'an is ta'allam al-Qur'an. We have to learn the Qur'an. We have to learn the Qur'an. That is an obligation upon us. Allah SWT sent it down to the believers as a means of guidance. So if we want guidance, where are we going to find it? In the Quran. In the Sunnah that explains the Quran. We have to go back to the books of Tafsir. If you don't know Arabic, Alhamdulillah, now you have Tafsir ibn Kathir. And you also have Tafsir al-Sa'di. If you can't afford to buy it, read the PDF. But you need to read the tafsir to learn the Quran as you, Allah wants you to understand it. So the first thing is, we have to learn the Quran. That's obligatory upon us. And Nabi Sassam called, Talab al-ilm faridatun ala kulli muslim. Seeking knowledge is an obligation upon every single Muslim. What is knowledge? قَالَ اللَّهِ وَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ وَفَاهِمَ الصَّحَابَ رِدْوَانِ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِمْ Allah said, the messenger of Allah said, and this is how the Sahaba understood it. That's knowledge. 
Sometimes you find a person will talk for hours, but they won't mention once. Allah said, and the Messenger of Allah said, and the Sahaba understood it like this. This is not knowledge. Don't be deceived by people who sound nice. Their voice is good. They move your heart. They know how to speak. They study these things. La. And the Messenger called Inna fil Bayani, la sihra. In good speech is magic. Sometimes you're attracted to an individual that might be one of the most misguided of people on the face of the earth. And they talk about Islam, but they don't ever mention. Allah said, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and the, the Sahaba understood it like this, la. That's the measuring stick for knowledge. So we have to learn the Quran first and foremost. Now, the Salaf, how were the Salaf when they came to learn the Quran? Ten ayat. Ten ayat. It said that it took Abdullah ibn Umar, radiallahu anhum, eight years to learn Surah Al-Baqarah. Eight years to learn Surah Al-Baqarah. Do you think that means just memorizing? No. The Sahaba, when they learned the Quran, they learned 10 ayat at a time. This doesn't mean we're going to say you only learn 10 ayat, then you do tafsir, because we're not like the Sahaba, where our iman is weak. Someone tells you that you're not going to memorize, you can say, I learned 10 ayat, oh, it's boring, this is too much, I can't do it. I want to memorize fast. That's how we are now. Everything, we want to attain it quickly. We don't have patience. One of the biggest things that we need to attain knowledge is sabr. Because it's ibadah. And Ibn Qayyim mentions sabr ala ta'atillah. You have to be patient in obedience to Allah Azza wa Jal. To memorize the Quran, it takes patience. But the Salaf, they would learn 10 ayat at a time. They would not go on to the next 10 until when? They have learned it. They know what it means. They understand it. Because as we said, the Qur'an is proof for you or against you. How do you know if you don't understand it? How do you know the Qur'an is a proof for you? How do you know maybe you've memorized something and you're doing the opposite of every single time? Maybe you memorize Surah Al-Luqman. Maybe you memorize Surah Al-Baqarah. Where he mentions, وَإِذْ أَخَذْنَا مِثَاقَ بَنِي إِسْرَائِلَ لَا تَعْبُدُونَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا And we're still bad to our parents. We still raise our voice at our parents. We still don't serve our parents. So then the Qur'an is going to be a proof against you. Or that we read, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَيْنِ إِحْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ But I'm still going into innovation. I'm still doing other than the straight path. The Qur'an is going to be a proof against you so if you don't contemplate on the quran to understand the quran as allah wants you to understand it you will not know if the quran is a proof for you or against you you will not know so the first thing that we have to learn the quran secondly we have to act upon the quran when you attain knowledge you have to act upon it it's mentioned, Ali Mabi Talib, he mentions, إِنَّمَا الْعِلْمُ الْعِلْمُ يَهْتِفُ لِلْعَمَلِ فَإِنْ أَجَابَهُ إِلَّا ارْتَحَلَ It mentions, knowledge, it calls for action. When you have knowledge, it calls out for action. He wants the knowledge to be acted upon. If you do not act upon the knowledge, it will leave you. If you do not act upon the knowledge, the knowledge is going to leave you. Even if it doesn't leave you in this life, it's going to leave you Yawm Al-Qiyamah. As the poet mentioned, Alimun bi ilmihi lam ya'malan mu'adhabun min qabli ubad al wathan The person of knowledge who does not act upon his knowledge will be punished before the idol worshipper. So what's going to happen? The knowledge is going to be of no benefit to him. It's going to leave him. No benefit. Rather, it will be a proof against him. So when you learn the Qur'an, you have to act upon it. As we mentioned earlier, يَأْتِي الْقُرْآنِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ شَفِيعًا لِأَصْحَابِهِ أَلَيْسَ كَذَلِكَ The Qur'an comes as an interceder for his companions on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. If you do not act upon the Qur'an, will it intercede for you? 
Is he going to intercede for you? Yes or no? Love. You see? If you don't act upon the Quran, the Quran is going to leave you when you need it most. It's going to go. It's not going to intercede for you. Why? Because you did not act upon it. So it's obligatory for you to act upon your knowledge. You have to act upon the Quran. When Aisha the Anha was asked about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how was he? How was his manners? What did she say? Who knows? What did she say about him? He was the Quran. And لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ you have the best example in the Messenger of Allah Azza wa Jal. When, we was, when Aisha was asked about him, she said, he was the Qur'an. What does that mean? He learned the Qur'an, he acted upon the Qur'an. What's after this, what do we have to do? Nad'u ila hadal Qur'an. We have to call to the Qur'an. We have to call to the teachings of the Qur'an. Allah says, Ya ayyuhal nas, u'budu rabbakum. That is the first command in the Qur'an. The first command in the Qur'an is to all of mankind. Is anyone exempt from this? La. Allah is calling mankind to worship Him. So if you are a person upon Islam, and you have received guidance from Allah Azza wa Jal, then you now need to call others to Islam. What do you call them to? Tawheed. What's the evidence of that? You know me. <laughs> we need evidence, Akhi. You know, we don't want anything of our evidence. Everything we say, we have to have evidence. Because what I want us to learn, just like you're studying, you get qualified, then you can work. The same with Islam. When you learn, then you can talk. Once you know the Quran, you know the Sunnah, then we can talk about it. We have to say Allah said, the Messenger of Allah said, the evidence is the same ayah. The first command from Allah, Ya ayyuhal nas, u'budu rabbakum. The hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ibn Abbas, when he sent Mu'adh ibn Jabal to Yemen, what did he say? إنك تأتي قوما من أهل الكتاب فليكن أول ما تدعوهم إليه أن يوحد الله إلى لا إله إلا الله إلى شهادة الله. A number of narrations. So that's the evidence. Sometimes now, what do we start doing when we go to call people to Islam? Oh, you know you get to do this. Your newborn baby. Oh, you know your Bible has this. Your your Torah has this. Your did the Prophet some command us to do that? Did Allah call us to that? No. He said, "Urbudu Rabbakum." Taib. Someone says to you, "How do you know Allah Subhanahu wa Taala? How do you know Allah? Through his signs. Also through his names and his attributes. Question: Is God from Allah's names and attributes? No one, when you're given da'wah, don't say God. Don't say God willing. Say inshallah. Say what does it mean? You teach them, if Allah wills. God is not from the names of Allah. Allah told us his names. Where? Where? In the Quran. <coughs> Everything is there for us in the Quran. Allah says, "Wallahi al-asma al-husna." Akmal al-ayah. Who knows the rest of it? Fadhuhu biha. Do you not need to make du'a for your exams? Do you not need to make du'a to get wealth? Do you not need to ask Allah for forgiveness? Okay, how do we ask Allah? Ibn Al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he mentions from the ways your du'a is more likely to be answered is bithana ala Allah. Is that you praise Allah Azza wa Jal. How do I praise Allah? 
His names and attributes. So what does that mean? What does that mean? If I need to praise Allah by his names and attributes, what, what's upon me then? To learn them. Okay, where do I learn them? In the Quran. And now, mashallah, some of the masahif, they do it for you. They put it in red. Any one of Allah's names, they put in a different color. Or there's books specifically authored in this. Like Fiqh al-Asma al-Husna by Shaykh Abdul Razak al-Badr, Hafidhah Ta'ala. You go back to the likes of these books, you understand Allah Azza wa Jal. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, radiallahu an, he came to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he says, Alimni du'an adu'allaha bi. He said, teach me a supplication I can call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with. He says, Qul, Allahumma inni ghulamtu nafsi dhulman kathira. He said, first and foremost, O oh my Lord, I have wronged myself in abundance. وَلَا يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ إِلَّا أَنْتْ And no one forgives the sins except for who? You, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he says, فَغْفِرْ لِي مَغْفِرَةً مِنْ عِنْدِكْ Give me forgiveness from yourself. وَرْحَمْنِي And also show mercy upon me. Then he says, إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ For indeed you are the most merciful and forgiven. With Allah's what? Names and attributes. When Allah SWT honored mankind in the Quran, what was the first thing mankind was honored with? I want the evidence too, so if you're going to answer, be prepared for the evidence. First thing mankind in general, what was the first thing mankind was honored with it's in the Quran? What about it? Keep going. You're close. Not God, like what was mankind honored with? Forgiveness. Before forgiveness, first thing. Kindness. Kindness. Adam was by himself. Being able to like ask forgiveness. Before this. Knowledge. Knowledge. Al-ilm. Okay, now who can help with the evidence? <clears throat> now. When Allah says. إِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَ إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفًا The malaika, they said to Allah, قَالُوا أَتَجَعْلُ فِيهَا مَنْ يُفْسِدُ فِيهَا وَيَسْفِكُ الدِّمَاءِ وَنَحْنُ نُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِكَ وَنَقَدِّسُ لَا What Allah said? قَالَ إِنِّي أَعْلَمُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Again, علم. The angels, why did they say this? They didn't question Allah's authority. They weren't disapproving of what Allah was doing. Why? Because the angels, they do not disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How do we know about the angels? Quran. MashaAllah. You see, everything we need is what? Quran. Walillahi alhamd. I want everyone, you know, to have a mushaf. Don't have Quran on your phone. Get a mushaf that you can always have with you in your bag, your pocket. Always have a mushaf. Always have a Quran you read. Don't read from your phone. Why do I say this? Shaitan is your enemy. Shaitan is your enemy. So when you start to read the Quran, or a book about Islam, or even watch YouTube, what happens? Instagram, this person's message you. Snapchat, this person's message you. Oh, this person's put a new post. What happens? Distractions. Distractions. 
And with the phone, the way it's designed, it's designed for you to use it in a way of entertainment. It's not used for anything else now. Unless you have the old school phone that is not smart and it just rings. And you have to press the button a number of times to get a different letter. If you don't have that phone, it's a distraction. And you're used to the action of swiping. So when it's in your hand, if you're not swiping, you're going to feel like something's missing. You're not using it as it's supposed to be used. So what happens? You go to the things that make you swipe. Instagram and TikTok. TikTok wastes your time. There is no khair on TikTok. You cannot seek knowledge in TikTok. So what does it do? It takes you away from the Quran. So don't read from your phone. Get a small mushaf that has good print, that doesn't strain your eyes. Have it with you all the time. Check your screen time. Check your screen time. And look at how much time you're on these things. Because if you say you don't have time for the Quran, it's because your time is going there. When you're on break, read the Mus'haf. When you're traveling by bus or by train, read from the Mus'haf. Don't read from your phone. When you're memorizing Quran, don't memorize from your phone. Memorize from the Mus'haf. Memorize from the Mus'haf. Sisters, if you're on your cycle, wear gloves. Wear gloves. Or use tissue. They say if it's your norm that you memorize Quran, it's permissible for you to continue to read it. But as for a person who doesn't read the Quran, but all of a sudden the cycle comes, they start reading it, then this is a problem. But have a mushaf and memorize from it. Because this is the biggest distraction. The phone. When you want to read the Quran, put your phone on do not disturb or airplane mode. If you have people that you need to hear from, like your mom, your dad, your siblings, then put them as exceptions from do not disturb. But don't let anything distract you from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because upon us is to learn it, to act upon it, and to call others to it. Also, what is upon us? To defend the Quran. We have to defend the Quran. How do we defend the Quran? How? Okay, what's the benefit? Be more explanatory and give more explanation in your answer. How? Why do we? How do we defend the Quran? By knowing it, so if someone tries to challenge it, then you can come back to it. Now, we have to know the Quran for its correct meaning as well. The Yahud, what did they do? What did they do? They changed the meaning. They distorted the meaning. Well, Allah says, وَمِنْهُمْ أُمِّيُّونَ لَا يَعْرِفُونَ الْكِتَابَ They are from those who could not read and write. They used to speak about the Torah with no knowledge. <laughs> then you had those who كَتَبَ بِأَيْدِيهِمْ They used to write with their hands. كَتَبَ بِأَيْدِيهِمْ مَا لَمْ يُوحَ اللَّهِ That which Allah did not reveal. And they said this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What did they do? They changed the meaning of the book that they had and they did it knowingly. That was their sin. Maybe if they try to attain that which is correct without any intention of distorting, they may have been excused. But Allah mentioned they changed. They changed the Quran knowingly. Not the Quran, the Torah, sorry. The Torah knowingly. They did it knowingly. They had knowledge of what they were doing. And you have now people today they say the Quran is a satir al awwalin Just like the time of Quraysh, what do they say? Fairy tales, old folk tales. Or they say the Quran was only relevant at the time of the Prophet Muhammad Sallam. Not our time today. This is what they say. Okay, how do you reject this? Because Allah, this is the whole of mankind. How do we reject when they say the Quran is not suitable for today? <clears throat> you can 
use the Quran uh, for scientific knowledge, like um, Just that ayah alone. Today we have completed for you your religion. Why is that so important? If something is complete, it doesn't need ziyada. It doesn't need to be increased. And that's why Imam Malik Rahimullah mentions Ma lam yakun hina idin dinan fala yakun al yoma. Dina. Whatever was not from the religion that day when Allah revealed Al Yoma Akmaltu Lakum Dinakum. Then it will not be from the religion today. We are all in need of guidance. Every single one of us, myself included. The reason we need to return back to the Quran and the Sunnah, we can't just say we're connecting with the Quran. The way we reconnect to the Quran, we also have to reconnect to the, the Sunnah. The way the Quran is memorized, the Sunnah needs to also be memorized. They're both revelation from Allah Azza wa And the evidence for this is, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam called, Kitab Allah wa Sunnati. He mentioned, I have left among you two things. If you hold on to them, you'll never go astray. You will never go astray, but you have to hold on to it. What is it? The book of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So when we are learning the Quran, it's important for us to ponder over the Quran. This is so important. What's the evidence for pondering over the Quran? أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنِ أَمْ عَلَى قُلُوبِهِمْ أَخْفَالُهَا Do they not ponder over the Qur'an? Or are there seals over their hearts? The ones whom Allah has described as having seals over their hearts are the who? Kuffar وَالْمُشْرِكِينَ وَالْمُنَافِقِينَ خَتَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَى قُلُوبِهِمْ Allah has sealed their hearts. But as for the believers, you see, if we neglect the Qur'an, then we are behaving as if our hearts have been sealed. If we neglect the Qur'an and do not learn it, we are acting as if our hearts have been sealed from that guidance. Allah has given it to you. This Qur'an as a means of guidance. So... That's why Umar ibn Khattabi mentions, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَرْفَعُ بِهَذَا الْكِتَابِ أَقْوَامًا وَيَدْعُ آخَرِينَ It mentions Allah will raise people with this book and he will lower and humiliate others. When did he say this? Who knows the story? Who knows the situation when Umar ibn Khattab said this? That Allah raises with this book people, raises them in rank. Now, Umar ibn Khattab, and he's traveling. He's the Khalifa. He's in charge of the affairs of the Muslims. This is a major role. So he's gone to travel and he's left someone in charge. He travels. On his journey, he sees the person he left in charge. Imagine you got gold. And you left it with someone. He said, listen, I'm traveling for a week. You left them with all your wealth. He said, look, I'm entrusting you this until I come back. You travel day two, you see that person. What are you going to think? What? Where's my money? You're going to lose your mind. The affairs of the Muslims is greater than this. Imagine I've left someone in charge of the affairs of the Muslims and I've seen them on the journey I'm on. And then I'm asked, so who did you leave? And he mentioned X, Y, and Z, such and such person. He said, is he not from the free slaves? What was the honor of him? No. Al-Fara'id. 
al faraid it can mean two things. Who knows what they are? That's fadail. But faraid. Obligations or inheritance. He was the only one who had firm knowledge of inheritance. The most knowledgeable of inheritance. Okay. If we say he's the most knowledgeable of inheritance, where did he derive that knowledge from? Quran. And that's why Umar said, Allah will raise people with this book and he will lower others. This person was a freed slave. At a time, insignificant. But then Allah honored him. But see us now, our duty, we don't seek praise in this life. We are seeking the reward with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when you tread this path, Allah will honor you. But don't look for it. Don't look for it. Don't look for praise of people. Don't look for anything from the people. Seek everything from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah will honor you. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called Khairukum man ta'allama al-Qur'an wa allamahu. The best of you are those who learn the Qur'an and teach others. Can you imagine you teach one person Surah Al-Fatiha the reward you gain? Every single time they recite in Salah, who gets reward? You. When they teach someone else, who gets reward? You. But if we are negligent and unmindful of this virtue, we miss out on abundant goodness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions in the Quran, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَتْلُونَ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ وَأَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةِ وَأَنْفَقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقَنَاهُمْ سِرًّا وَعَلَانِيًا يَرْجُونَ تِجَارَةً لَنْ تَبُورُ لِيُوَفِّيَهُمْ أُجُورَهُمْ وَيَزِيدَهُمْ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ إِنَّهُ غَفُورٌ شَكُورٌ Allah mentions in this ayah, those who read, yatluna, how much reward did you get for reading the Quran? Who doesn't know? Who doesn't know the reward for reading the Quran? And the Prophet said, مَنْ قَرْأَ حَرْفًا مِنْ كِتَابِ اللَّهِ فَلَهُ حَسَنًا Whoever reads a letter from the book of Allah, then you have a reward. وَالْحَسَنَةُ بِعَشْرَةِ أَمْثَالِهَا But the reward is by 10 multiplies. For one letter. Subhanallah. How many of us are on Bitcoin and chasing the bag like? And now that it's bleeding, our hearts are bleeding. We're depressed. Or someone's invested in something and it's gone down. They're so miserable. The Quran is pure gain. The Quran is pure gain. We forget the account of the hereafter by the account that we might not even get anything from. Imagine people chase money, then they die. What happens to that wealth? Where does it go? It goes to other people. An inheritance, paying off debts, paying for your funeral. When you chase this worldly life, you're never going to be satisfied. Ever. You will never be satisfied. وَلِهَادَ قَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ لَوْ كَانَ لِبْنِ آدَمْ وَادِيًا مِنْ ذَهَبْ لَأَرَادَ ثَالِثَهَا وَلَا يَمْلَأُ فَاهُ إِلَّا بِالتُرَابِ Mentions, if a person had two valleys of gold, can you imagine that? Two valleys of gold? You know a valley, right? Can you imagine having two valleys of gold? Subhanallah. They would want a third one. It doesn't stop. They will never be content until when? Their mouth is filled with dirt. What does that mean? When they're buried. 
when they're buried. You see Instagram celebrities, celebrities in general, what do they do? They post everything they want the people to see that they have. They buy a new car, they make a video of it. Me buying my first car. Why? To show the world, isn't it? What does everyone do? Like, 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 follow, 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 comment, comment, comment. What did you just do? You put money in that person's account. What did you get from it? Nothing. But when you read the Quran and you get a reward for every letter, you, an example for someone else, someone's going to see you reading Quran. See, imagine you're in the message reading Quran. Someone comes, they want to just talk, they see you like, SubhanAllah, yeah, let me read the Quran too. Who's going to get a reward? Both of you. Both of you. So these people that read the book of Allah Azza wa Jal, for every letter is 10 rewards, not one, 10. Don't even waste your time trying to count it. Don't count. Just read. Just read and read and read. What else do they do? Aqamu salah. They establish the prayer. What do you do in the prayer? You read the Quran. You recite the Quran. And of the things that we benefited from Shaykh Asim Qayyuti, Hafiz Ta'ala of recent, when you're in the salah, you have to move your mouth and your tongue for it to be considered reading. You cannot read in your head. Reading in your head, your salah is not valid. It's because if you're praying by yourself and you have to recite Surah Al-Fatiha, if you read in your head, you haven't read Surah Al-Fatiha. Kira'ah, reading, is by moving of the tongue and the lips. You have to move your tongue and your lips. In the salah, you read Quran. What else do they do? وَأَنْفَقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقَنَاهُمْ They spend from what Allah SWT has providing them with. These are from the sifat of the believers. They establish the salah, they read the book of Allah, they spend in a way that is pleasing to Allah Azza wa Why do they do all of this? يَرْجُونَ تِجَارَةً لَنْ تَبُورُ They are seeking a business with Allah that will never perish. It will never come to an end. إِذَا مَاتَ بِنِ آدَمْ إِنْ قَتَ عَمْلُوا إِلَّا مِنْ إِحْدَى الثَّلَاثِ When one of us dies, all of our actions come to an end, except for one of three. What are those things? Who knows? One of three things doesn't come to an end. Sadaqa jariya. What is sadaqa jariya? Who knows what sadaqa jariya is? Ongoing charity. Sadaqa jariya is to start before you die. This new thing that people are doing, of doing GoFundMe and all of this, this is not from the sunnah. The Kibar ulama say this is from innovation of contemporary time. When you die, don't rely upon someone doing GoFundMe for you, building a message in your name, building a water well in your name. What stops you from trying to do it now? That's Sadaqa Jariya. What you establish now, before you die, and people continue to benefit from it after you have died. Not this new thing. This is only in the last 10, 15 years we heard of this stuff. Before, you never heard of this. Go find me. Now people, they get rich when their spouses and their children die. Because someone said, let me just open GoFundMe page for them. I'll get them £50,000. For what? They don't even have sad no more. They're happy. Someone died and became rich. La. You... Me, we all, before we die, have to try and establish something that people will benefit from after we die. Don't depend on people to do this for you. Actually write in your will, don't do it for me. I don't want this. You have to do it yourself. Don't even tell no one. Say, oh, I can't afford it. Okay, you're alive. Your friends are alive. Say, listen, we know the hadith. Who wants to join in and have a share? Let's do something before we die. Is that difficult? No. 
But it's because we are negligent, we're not thinking about it. We don't remind ourselves enough. When Allah says, inna ka mayyitun wa inna hum mayyitun. You're going to die, and so are they going to die. Every one of us is going to die. But we become distracted by turning away from the Quran. The Quran reminds you of your reality. Masiruka, where are you going? Where's your end goal? So then now you have focus. Try and establish something of Sadaqah Jariah before you die. Even if it means you buy a mushaf, you put it on the shelf in the masjid. You see that there's old people in your masjid, there's not enough chairs, you buy a chair. Someone sits on the masjid in the chair. This is all Sadaqah Jariah. There's a masjid being built, you purchase a brick. That's Sadaqah Jariah. Don't think it has to be something big. But do it before you die. Don't wait for someone to do it on your behalf. The second thing mentioned is what? Before this. That's the last thing mentioned. Knowledge that other people benefit from. Knowledge that other people benefit from. Khairukum man ta'allama al-Qur'an wa'allama. The best of you are those who learn the Qur'an and teach it. What does this mean? Learn how? Is it just how to recite? Teaching someone the language of the Qur'an. Someone how to read the Qur'an. The tafsir of the Qur'an. The Qur'an is the source of aqidah, the source of fiqh, the source of sirah, the source of the sciences of Islam. Anything from the science of Islam that is derived from the Quran, you teach it, you are from Khairukum man ta'allam al Quran wa Allama. Knowledge that other people will benefit from. Imam Bukhari, rahimahullah, his name is going to be mentioned from the day he died until when? Yawm al Qiyamah. It's always going to be said, Rahimahullah. I was listening to one sheikh. One of the senior scholars of Kuwait, he said, I'll give you a hundred Kuwaiti dinar, which is a very, like, for this a question, that's about 275 pounds. If someone can name me one rich man from the time of Bukhari. Name a rich man. One rich man from the time of Bukhari. It's not, you're not going to think of anyone. But someone tells you, another scholar, who are you going to think of? His student. Who's his student? Imam Muslim. And other scholars of that time. When someone asks you to name me some of the scholars of the past, you're going to be able to mention them. Ask about Ashab dunya the people that had the wealth of the dunya. Who are they? They're unknown. They're not known. Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah. Why is he famous? Why is he famous? For what? Tafsir. Is that the only thing he did? He was a scholar of hadith as well. But Allah honored him and made him someone who's going to be remembered for what? Something related to the Quran. Everyone who reads Tafsir Ibn Kathir is going to receive, he's going to receive a reward for this. Anyone who benefits. Ilmun yuntafa'ubi. Knowledge that other people benefit from. The best thing you can do is something related to the Quran. One of the Sahaba, they said, when I, ever since I heard this hadith, I've been sitting in the same chair for 40 years teaching people the Quran. Had it moved. 40 years in the same chair teaching people the Quran. The virtue is great. Don't let anyone deceive you to think something else is more virtuous than being a person of the Quran. Says Ahlul Quran, Ahlullah wa khasatuhu. The people of the Quran are the people of Allah Azza wa Jal. Is there something more honorable than this? No way. What's the third thing mentioned in the hadith? The last thing? Righteous offspring that make du'a for you. 
How can we have righteous offspring if they don't know the Quran? How do you know how to guide your child and make your child righteous if they don't know the Quran? Where do we learn the mannerisms that we're supposed to have as a Muslim? Where do we learn an example of advice to a child in the Quran? Surah Luqman. Luqman was not a prophet. He was a wise man. But Allah made him remembered and honored him because of his advice to his son. What did he tell him? Preserve the rights of Allah, the rights of your parents, and to give and to have good manners with the creation of Allah Azza wa Jal. To have good manners with the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A short advice that is great in benefit. So how can you cultivate your child upon other than the Quran expect them to be righteous? When you teach your children the Quran from a young age, if they are tested and they go astray, bi'ithnillah, with the permission of Allah, that which they know of the Quran, they will come back. They will come back inshallah ta'ala. But where do you also learn examples of being patient with your children? So to Yusuf. Yusuf, so to Yusuf will teach you about cultivating your children, being patient with them. Not all of your children will be upright and righteous. But you as a parent have to make dua for them. The dua of the child that is righteous benefits you after you die. But your dua for your child benefits your child whilst you are a alive. Whilst you are alive. In the hadith, thalathu da'watin mustajabatin. In the hadith, three dua that are accepted. Da'watul mazlum, the dua of the one who's oppressed. Da'watul musafir, the one who's traveling. Da'watul walid, li waladi. The dua of the parent for their child. Ask Allah to make you a person of the Quran. And take the means. When you have children, ask Allah to make them people of the Quran. That they will benefit you in your hereafter. They will benefit you whilst they're, you're in your grave. Your first child, all of your children. May Allah give you righteous spouses and good children after you have finished your studies and the likes and your plans beforehand. I mean, <coughs> don't let anyone teach your child Surah Al-Fatiha before you. Don't let anyone teach your child Surah Al-Fatiha before you. Don't send them to the madras and say, I was too busy preparing for work, so I couldn't teach them Surah Al-Fatiha. Because then you're allowing someone else to take that reward from you. Don't give it to anyone. Don't give it to anyone. وَإِيَّاكُمْ أَن تَكُونُوا مِنَ الَّذِينَ قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا And I warn you from being of those who the Messenger complained to Allah Azza wa Jal that my people have taken this Qur'an as something that is abandoned. We abandon the Qur'an by not learning it, by doing the opposite of what I've told you is upon us, by not acting upon it, by not complaint, contemplating over the Qur'an, by not teaching people the Qur'an. This is also of the ways the Qur'an is abandoned. Not defending the Qur'an is a way that the Qur'an is abandoned. Not learning tajweed, how to recite the Qur'an properly, is how the Qur'an is also abandoned. Not listening to the Qur'an is also from the ways the Qur'an is abandoned. The Prophet Muhammad was commanded by Allah Azza to listen to which Sahaba? Who knows? Ubaid ibn Ka'b. Which surah? Surah Al-Bayyinah. Imagine Allah calls you by name. He told the Messenger of Allah to go and listen to Obey ibn Ka'b. When the Messenger of Allah came to him, he told him, said, Samani Rabbi. Yani my Lord has named me by name. Imagine that. What does Allah say in the Quran? Uzkuruni azkurkum. Remember me and I will remember you. We mentioned in the beginning of the talk 
the best remembrance of Allah SWT is what? The Quran. Read the Quran abundantly. Memorize the Quran. When we said, Ihfadillah, Yahfadka Allah. When you're memorizing the words of Allah and understanding it, know that Hifd, as Abdullah ibn Mas'ud mentioned, Laysa al Hifdu bi Hifd al Huruf, wa innama huwa bi Hifd al Hudud. Know that memorizing the Quran is not just memorizing the wording, but also by preserving the law, the boundaries, the limits within the Quran. Ay, that is the hafiz. If a person is, says they memorize the Quran, but they do everything that opposes the Quran, would you say this person is a hafiz? Fil ma'ana, al haqiqi, in reality, are you going to say this person is a hafiz? No. So hifz al Quran is preservation of the Quran, a preservation of what it means, what it requires from you in terms of action. That's when you see that a person is a person of the Quran, and then the Quran is a proof for you. وَنَسَلَ اللَّهِ يَجْعَلَ الْقُرْآنِ حُجَّةً لَنَا لَا عَلَيْنَا وَأَنْ يَجْعَلَ الْقُرْآنِ شَفِيعًا لَنَا يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ وَأَنْ يَجْعَلَنَا مِنْ أَهْلِ الْقُرْآنِ أَلَهُمَا آمِينَ ومن الذين يقال له اقرا وارتقي ورتل كما كنت ترتل في الدنيا نسال الله التوفيق والسداد لما يحبه ويرضاه اللهم امين يعني we ask Allah Azza wa Jalla to make us of the people of the Quran to make us of those who the Quran is a proof for them and not against them and to make us of those who said to them read and ascend just as you used to read in this dunya try your best as i said earlier who wants to memorize Quran Everyone has to have that intention. Solely for the reward that it will raise your rank in Jannah. That is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's the nur ursila in the Nabi sallallahu nas min al The light that was sent of the Prophet Muhammad sallam to take the people out of darkness is the Quran. So upon us is the Quran. No one takes the Quran as a companion and finds themselves in misery, abadan. You look on those, those places, the poorest of children that memorize the Quran, they're smiling, they're happy. But those who have everything in the dunya, they commit suicide. The rich people that don't know Allah Azza wa Jal, they commit suicide. But the poorest people that have nothing, but they have the Quran. So the ulama mentions, al-faqru, poverty, the true poverty, is al-faqr fi din is that you're poor in your religion. Poor in your religion. And Nabi says, Khal, Mal faqru akhsha alaykum. Mal faqra akhsha alaykum. The message is not poverty that I fear for you. Walakin akhsha alaykum and tubsita alaykum al dunya. Kama busitat alaman. Kana kablakum. Fatana fasuha. Kama tana fasuha. Fatuhlikukum kama ahlakethum. He mentions not poverty that I fear for you. But it's that the fact, what I fear for you is that the dunya is facilitated for you. So you start to compete in it, just as they did. It will distract you from the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah mentions, al takathur You've been destroyed, distracted by competition and worldly gain. What happens? It will destroy you, just as it destroyed those who preceded you. They say the Quran is the rope of Allah that's been extended from the sama to the earth. Hold on to it firmly. Allah mentions, وَعْتَسِمُوا بِحَبَ لِلَّهِ وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا Hold firmly to the rope of Allah SWT and don't be disunited. What is the Habl Allah? Al-Qur'an. Was-Sunnah. Was-Sunnah to fassil al-Qur'an. It's the Qur'an and the Sunnah. And the Sunnah explains the Qur'an. That is what is upon us. And we hold on to it together. When someone goes astray from this rope, that's when you say, look, come back. This what you're doing is against the Quran and the Sunnah. And when you unite upon this, this is the thing Allah mentions. كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ إِخْوَانًا بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانًا Allah mentions before, you was all enemies. But Allah united your hearts. And you became from the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Brothers in Islam. But if we don't unite upon the Quran and the Sunnah, it's not possible to unite. You can't unite upon skin color, country, 
social classes, none of this. The only thing that you will unite upon is the Quran and the Sunnah. Allah mentioned that in the Quran. You were enemies fighting each other. Can you imagine? And then they became the closest. By what? Islam. And the source of learning Islam is the Quran and the Sunnah. So whoever wants goodness for their dunya and their hereafter, upon us is to go back to the Quran. As I said, if you think you're busy, memorize one ayah a day. Just one. Start from just Amma. Easy. Memorize one ayah a day. And you see that one ayah becomes free. It becomes a page. Five pages. Before you know it, you've memorized the Quran. But you do it for who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the Sahaba, they asked the Prophet Muhammad for advice. He says, Oh, me, any kulli fi Islam shay'an la as'alu anhu ba'dak. He said, Say to me in Islam something I can't ask anyone other than you. He says, Qul amantu billah thumma staqim. Qul amantu billah thumma staqim. Say, I have believed in Allah Azza wa Jal and then be steadfast. Allah says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهُ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَ أَلَّا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا أَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُوَعَدُونَ Mentioned, indeed those who say Allah is my Lord, and then they are steadfast, the angels will descend upon them. Do not fear in this life, nor in the hereafter. Do not fear, because you were steadfast. You were steadfast, so do not be in a state of fear. Do not grieve. Do not be sorrow of the horrors of Yom Al Qiyamah. You're going to be saved from this. Why? Because you believed in Allah Azza wa Jal, and you were steadfast upon this. You will not be in a state of fear. He says, "Wa abshiru bil Jannah." Abshiru bil Jannah. Rejoice with Jannah. Rejoice with Jannah that you have been promised. What have you been promised Jannah for? For being of those who are mustaqim, those who are steadfast, holding firm to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet said, Tuba liman aman nabi walam yarani. He said, Glad tidings of Jannah be to the one who believes in me and has never seen me. The Prophet said, He's waiting, he's longing to meet his brothers. The Sahab said, Awalasna ikhwanak. The Sahab said, Are we not your brothers? He said, Bal antum ashabi. You're my companions. My brothers are yet to come. They're those who come after you. But if you want to be from the brothers of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu then you have to be a person upon the Quran and the Sunnah. They come together. You can't choose one or the other and you cannot leave either of them. You have to uphold the Quran and the Sunnah. We mentioned, إِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ صِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ لَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ What is that path? They will be with those who Allah has bestowed his favor upon. From who? The prophets, the messengers, those who were truthful, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, the companions, the righteous ones. They are the best of companions you can have. When will we have that companionship? Yawm al-Qiyamah. Yawm al-Qiyamah. So if you want to be close to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu Yawm al-Qiyamah, then upon you is the Qur'an and the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, naktafi bihad al-qadr insha'Allah, wa naftah al-bab for any questions, insha'Allah.